I'll be reading from Revelations 1, verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the times is at hand. Good morning. Everybody get your Bibles and turn to Revelation. Revelation. The Beatitudes of Revelation. You know, this year, 2023, and beginning in January, January the 1st, all the way through June the 4th, we studied the Sermon on the Mount on Sunday night. Many of you were here for every one of those lessons from January all the way down to June. And we looked at all the Sermon on the Mount, Sunday night after Sunday night. That's on the YouTube. If you missed any of those and would like to go back, you can find them on the YouTube and you can watch those lessons. And at the very beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, uh, we have what is called the Beatitudes. You know, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the, those that mourn, blessed are the meek, blessed are the hunger and thirst after righteousness, and all of those uh, beatitudes. And the reason we call them beatitudes is not because the Bible has the word beatitude. It means happy. Blessed are. That word means blissful. To be blissed. Blissed out. Folks, we have a lot to be happy about. Do we not? Amen. So much to be happy about. And Jesus, and when he was looking out over that crowd on the Sermon on the Mount, saw the poor. He saw the downtrodden. He saw, saw people who were sick and they needed truth. And he told them, he looked at that crowd and he said, You're happy. You're blissed out. You're blessed if you're poor in spirit. You're blissed out if you're meek. You're blissed out. And he went on to say at the very end of those Beatitudes, you're blissed out if you're persecuted. You can be happy in the face of persecution. We have so much to be blissed out about, to be blessed about. And there are some blessings in the Revelation. There are seven that we're going to look at today. So get your notes, and I hope that you have your notes, and we're going to be putting them on the board for your convenience as we go through. Let's look at the blissed out, the blessedness of the books of the, the Beatitudes of Revelation. The first one, Revelation chapter 1, verse number 3. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John is on the island of Patmos and he's getting this revelation. And he is told by this angel that's carrying him around into different parts of heaven's gates and all of the things that he sees there. And it's just so full of joy and happiness and blissfulness. And he heard the angel say, blessed is he. And of course, this is Jesus talking. Blessed is he that reads. We are happy when we read the word. Now he says the words of this prophecy. This is in Revelation 1, verse number 3. So we're going to go all the way through the book and see these seven blessedness. Uh, so we're at the very beginning. And he hasn't even given the words of the prophecy yet. He said, but if you will look at this prophecy, the Revelation particular, but the Bible in general, if you will just read the Word of God, you will be happy. Not only if you read it, if you will hear it, listen to it. Hear the Word of God. A lot of people read the Word of God. Oh, I'm going to read the Bible through all the way in 2024. And they begin January, and they go all the way through December, and they read the entire Bible. Some of you have read the entire Bible many times, and that's, a, that's very, very good. But if we just read the words and we don't listen to it, then we're not going to get the blissfulness that is promised to us. These Beatitudes are promises. If you will read it, if you will listen to it, and if you will keep those things which are written in this word. You've got you to keep it. That means you've got to hold on to it. You know, when you keep something, you keep it. You hold on to it. One translation might render this word, guard it. 
If, if I give you something to keep for me, I'm giving you something to guard for me. So keep it. Hold on to it. Don't just read it, listen to it, and then let it go. It goes in one ear and right out the other. No. Read it. Hear it. Listen to it. And then hold on to it. If you do that, you will be blissed. Blissed out. In Psalms chapter 119, verse 140, the psalmist said, Thy word is very pure. Therefore, thy servant, the person who is writing this psalm, David, thy servant loveth it. I love your word. Why? It's so pure. It's so good. I want to hear it. I want to read it. I want to hear it. I want to keep it. I want to hold on to it. I absolutely love it. Everybody keep your finger there in Revelation chapter 1. I hope you're going to go along with us, even though I'm going to be putting it on the board. You might want to write a note in your Bible or something. But keep your finger there in Revelation 1 and go to Romans. Romans chapter 3. So many times, instead of letting God be our God and listen to God, which of course is the Word of God, the Bible, we'll listen to everything else. We want to listen to the newspaper. We want to listen to the news outlets, when the media, whatever anybody else says, Facebook, uh, the Internet of any type. We want to hear them. What do you have to say about it? But we won't stop and listen to what God has to say. Here's what Romans chapter 3, verse 3, beginning says. For what if some did not believe? There's a lot of people out there that don't believe. Unbelievers. And they're telling us all sorts of messages and all sorts of things. But what if these people who do not believe? Well, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Does that mean just because they don't believe it and they get up and tell you, I don't believe in going to church. I don't believe in studying the Bible. I don't believe that you have to be baptized to be saved. I don't believe these things. Shall their non-belief make the word of God of none effect? Means it makes it useless or ineffective? No. Just because they don't believe it doesn't make it true. It's true. It's the God's word. He said, God forbid, verse number 4 of Romans 3, Yea, let God be true, but every man of what class? Liar. Every person out there that gives you any message that's contrary to the word of God, God's right, they're wrong. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Folks, when people are giving you and spewing out all kinds of passages and messages and, and even judgments against you, God is true. They're not. But we listen to it so many times. And we don't even go to the Word of God and read it. We don't even hear God's Word. We don't keep God's Word. There was a story going around on the Internet many years ago. And that story was this, that Billy Graham, many of you might know Billy Graham. He's a preacher. And he goes around and he has these great crusades and the story is that he was doing a crusade in New Orleans. I don't know if you've ever been to New Orleans. I went once. I will not go back. But he went to New Orleans and did this great crusade. And it was so magnificent. And people were coming down the aisle. And, and revival broke out. It was so much so that Billy Graham, in the middle of the night, about midnight, got into a little cart, like a golf cart. And people followed him. And they went out into the streets of New Orleans, downtown, and was preaching the gospel. And people were getting listening to him and, and all that sort of thing. And that went around the Internet. There's just one trouble with it. It was not true. It just wasn't true. It never happened. But people were getting encouraged by it. And this old Billy Graham, this Billy Graham, that. And they were sharing it. And they were telling it. And they were emailing it. And the story went wild. And it never even happened. Folks, we've got to be careful about what we're hearing out there. Let God be true. Read the Bible. Here's another. You're blissed out. If you not only read the Bible, hear it, and hold on to it, you're blissed out. Go to Revelation 14. Revelation 14, verse number 13. And here's what the Bible says. And I heard a voice from heaven. This is John in this revelation. He heard a voice from heaven. And here's what that voice said. Right. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. 
from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Folks, we are blissed out if we die. If we die in the what class? In the Lord. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Now, if we are not in the Lord, if we're not in Christ, then we're not in blissfulness. We are in the most horrible, agonizing torment. But if we are in the Lord and we die, the voice from heaven said, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. John was talking, his revelation was to so many people that were literally being killed by the Roman government, being put to death because they were Christians. They had been baptized into Christ for the remission of their sins. So they were in the Lord and they were being killed. And John said, great, that's good. You can be blissed out if you die in the Lord. Now, we know that we all are going to die. If Jesus doesn't come back in our lifetime, then we're all going to die. Some of you that are 70s and 80s and even 90s know for sure that that time is growing short. If you're in your 20s and 30s and 40s, you may be thinking, well, that's not going to happen. But it could happen, and you know it can. Your experience tells you that it can. Just look out in the world and see that death can come at any time to any age. I had a really, really good friend several years ago. Uh, a storm had come into Tuscumbia, knocked a lot of trees down, everything was turned, and his meter base was, was blown off. And, and he had to go to Lowe's and pick him up another. So him and his brother got in a truck, and they went to Lowe's, and his brother was driving. He bought the meter base and the pole, and he was going to redo all of that. He's a good electrician. And he gets in the truck, and they're riding back, and they're going down the street of Tuscumbia. The birds were singing. The sun was out. The storm had passed. And right as they got under a Pacific tree on 6th Street in Tuscumbia, a limb fell right out of that tree. It's just been hanging there ever since the storm. What's the chances? It's just been hanging there for 24 hours. And when his truck going... 35 miles an hour, whatever the speed limit was, it just got to be there at that particular point, at that particular time, the limb fell right onto the cab of the truck and crushed Daryl, killed him instantly. His brother, who was driving, just got a few bruises and scratches. One was taken, the other was left. If Daryl was in the Lord, it was the happiest time of his existence. Now, his family was sad, his friends were certainly sad, and they're still talking about it. One of his best friends, every time his birthday comes or his death day, he'll post it on the internet. He'll say, I miss him. I miss him. And he does because he was his best friend. But if Daryl was in the Lord, it was a happy time. He would be certainly blissed out if we're prepared to meet the Lord. If he comes in the moment of death or if he comes in the moment of his second coming, we will be blissed out. Look at the Revelation Chapter number 16, verse number 15. The Revelation, chapter number 16, verse number 15. Behold, I come as a thief. I don't even know how a thief comes. Uh, you're not expecting a thief. He's going to come when you least expect him. That's what he designed to do that. That's what he does. But I'm going to come as a thief. Blessed, happy is he that watcheth and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they shall see his shame. If we don't, and the, and the idea is our garments are that which we are robed with. We're robed in righteousness. We're robed in goodness. We're robed in a Christian life. And if we watch our God, we keep our garments. We, we hold on to the righteous living, the Christ life. And if we watch for His second coming and we're holding on to our lifestyle of Christianity, then we're blissed out when He comes. Even before He comes, we're blissed out. Why? Blessed is He that does watch His garment. If you're just watching your lifestyle of Christian, you're a blissed out person. You can live a blissed out life. But when you're watching, you're in that constant state of awareness. You're conscious of the fact that Jesus can come anytime, either in your death 
like happened to Daryl in an instant, or in his second coming, his return. You're constantly aware that I'm going to die or Jesus is coming back in a moment. In the twink It can happen in any moment. If we watch something, whether it's your finances, whether it's your friends, whether it's your job that you do, your career, whatever you watch. Listen to me, young people. You got a whole life ahead of you, I hope. Maybe you're going to live 80 years if Jesus doesn't come back and you don't die. Whatever you watch will get better and better and better. If you don't watch it, if you don't watch your weight, if you don't watch your finances, if you don't watch your friends, if you don't watch your career, if you don't watch your skill sets, if you don't watch it, it changes. And it changes quickly. But if you watch it and be aware of it and you're conscious of it, it gets better and better and better. Your health. Watch your health. It gets better. Now, sometimes there's dreaded diseases that happen that you can't prevent. But if you watch your health, it tends to get better. Anything you watch tends to get better. So blessed are, is a person who watches their Christian lifestyle. It gets better and better and better. And then when he comes back, we're truly blissed out. Why? Because we're not going to be naked. We're not going to be ashamed when he comes back if we don't have that Christian lifestyle. We just don't know when he's coming. Jesus said in Matthew 25, verse number 13, Watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. You just don't know when it's going to be happening. But it's going to happen. We're blessed. We're blessed if we're consciously watching for it. Now, turn in your Bible to Revelation 19, verse number 9. A couple of chapters over. Here's another blessing. Oh, we're blissed out if we'll read the Bible, hear it, and keep it. We're blissed out if, if we just die. <laughs> if we're in the Lord, we're blissed out. We, we're blissed out if we live a Christian life watching in expectation of the second coming. We're blissed out. But we're also blissed out if we're a Christian. He said to me, write this down, John, what? Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, these are the true sayings of God. Don't listen to the social media post that says this is not true. Just don't listen to that. Don't listen to the media when they get up and tell you that, that you don't have to go to church and that church is a, a for the old folks. Don't listen to none of that. Let God be true. This is the true sayings of God. What? You will be blessed out. If you are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Being married to Jesus Christ, you're a, of the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is the church of Christ. So therefore, if we are added to the church of Jesus Christ, then we are the bride of Jesus Christ. And we are called to that marriage supper. In this case, there's the guest as well. But it's the marriage supper of the Lamb, which is Jesus Christ. If we are part of that relationship that Jesus has with all the people in the church that He died for, then we're blissed out. What causes? Well, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 9, the Bible says this, He has saved us and called us with a holy calling. So the people who are saved are the ones who have been called. Now, it's not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. The point is, God had you in mind before the world even began. And then He sent His only begotten Son to die for you. And then He called you with a holy calling, and He saved you. Only people who are saved are those who are in His church. If you're outside of His church, you are lost. So therefore, the saved people are the ones in His church. In 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, verse number 14, whereunto He called you. How? By our gospel. To the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. You want the glory of God? You want to obtain the glory of God? Then you need to answer the call. How did He call you? By the gospel. The good news, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus, and then the fact that we're to believe in that. 
We're to repent of our sins, confess that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, and be baptized into Christ for the remission of those sins. We will receive the glory that He wants us to have. Blessed are you if you're a part of that experience. If we're not a part of the church of Jesus Christ, we're not His bride. And we're not a part of this supper of the Lamb. And if we're not, we can't be blessed. But if we are, it's a true saying. You'll be blessed. And then the Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Look at verse number 6. Blessed starts out by saying this is something that will bliss you out. What is it? Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. If you've got part in the first resurrection, on such, those people who have part in the first resurrection, the second death has no power over you. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with Him a thousand years. Now, we're not going to go into the details of this particular text about the thousand-year reign and so forth. Study that on your own. But you are reigning with Christ. You know who that is. It's the church. You know the people who are priests of God. That's the church. Christians. So we know we're talking about a group that are members of the church of Christ. And the second death has no power over members of the church of Christ. Listen to the Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, just a few verses down. The second death, he says in that verse, is the lake of fire. That's hell. Christians are not going to hell. Members of the church of Jesus Christ are not going to hell. The bride of Christ is not going to hell. And that's a blissful thought. That's a happy thought. None of you who are in Christ who died in Christ, or when Jesus comes back, you're walking in that garment. You're not going to go to hell. What a blissful thought that is. But you've got to take part in the first resurrection. And what is that first resurrection? Now, everybody's going to be raised from the dead. Everybody. If you are still alive, when Jesus comes back, your body will be changed, your glorious body, so there will be no death for you. But if you have died then everybody, that good, bad, ugly, we're all going to be raised from the dead. Some to the glory of God, heaven. Some to everlasting destruction. So that first resurrection is not talking about the resurrection of everybody. It's a resurrection of specifics. And let me suggest to you that it's the resurrection that we participate when we participate in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When we die, to the old man of sin. And that man is dead. And we bury that man in a watery grave. We call it baptism. Romans chapter 6 explains all this. I'm not making it up. It's in the Bible. But we bury that man. And the Bible says we're buried with him into his death. So we, that man died. We bury that man in that watery grave of baptism where we're buried with Christ. And then we are raised. There's that first, there's that resurrection. We're raised to walk a new life. Put on those garments. Watch and keep our garments. We're raised to watch, uh, walk a new life. We're a new creature in Christ. God adds us to the church of Christ. And therefore, we are His bride. And we have such to be happy about because we're members of the church. And if we have taken part in that first resurrection, then the second death of hell, the lake of fire, will have no bearing on us. We, it will have no power over us. The question is, have we been baptized into Christ? Have we been raised with Christ? Have we taken part in that resurrection? If we haven't, then the second death has full power over you. But if you have, the second death has no power over you. What a blissful thought that is. Revelation chapter 22, a couple of chap ver chapters over. Look at verse number 7. The Revelation 22, verse number 7. Here's something that will bliss you out if you're a Christian and you have no worries of hell. This is so blissful. Behold, I come quickly. 
I'm on my way back. Blessed is he that keeps the saying of the prophecy of this book. He's already said that at the beginning of the prophecy. You know, if you hear it, read it, and keep it. Revelation 1, verse number 3. He said it again in Revelation chapter 16 that we just read in verse number 15. He said, watch and keep your garments. Hold on to that Christian lifestyle. So blessed is those that keep the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Now, particularly, again, talking about the prophecy of the Revelation itself, the book of the Revelation itself. But it's talking about the Bible in general, keep the word of God. Happy are you when he comes quickly and you've been holding on to the word of God, putting it into your life and letting all of mankind's philosophies and ideas and I posts on Facebook, all of that, not true. This is the true sayings of God. You can be blissed out if you hold on to those things and let those things of the world go. It's hard to let it go. Why? Because you want to be like them. You want to be American. You want to be a, a same kind of person they are. You want to be rich. You want to be this and famous and, and the famous people say it and all this. You, 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 you're, you're influenced by the media. And if you don't think you're influenced by the media, think again. There are seven great influencers in human life. And one of the most powerful of the seven is the media. Worldwide. So, let God be true. Keep the sayings of this book. Hold on to the sayings of God. And then look at the Revelation 22, verse number 14. Number seven and final. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Now, the tree of life is in heaven. The tree of life used to be in the Garden of Eden. And then when they sinned against God, they separated themselves from God, the tree of life was removed from them, and the Bible says it's in heaven now. And then if we are in Christ, we are so happy because we're going to go to heaven one day, not hell. This is a blissful thought. It's a happy thought. But we've got to do His commandments in order to have right to that tree of life. Go to heaven. Live eternally. And to enter in through the gates. What gates? The gates of heaven. Oh, this is such a happy, happy thought. Now, I want to read that same verse from the English Standard Version. That's the ESV. Some of you have that translation. It says exactly the same thing, except it translates that phrase, do His commandments, and it looks at the Greek. I don't speak Greek, but they do. And they look at the King James people. They said, oh, that Greek statement means do His commandments. And the people who translated from the original Greek and they wrote the ESV translation, they said, well, I want to translate it, do His commandments, that's good, but here's a, here's a more particular way to, to translate that phrase. So listen to the ESV of 22 verse 14. Blessed are they who wash their robes so that they may have right to the tree of life and they may enter the city by the gates. Same exact thing, except they say, you know, that do His commandments are those that wash their robes. We've already spoken about that. They keep their garments. They keep their life. They hold on to that Christian walk. In Revelation chapter 7, verse number 13, one of the elders answered and said to me, Now John is touring heaven. An angel is walking around. Jesus says some things to John. Uh, an elder, one of the elders that he saw, says some things to John. Even thunders said some things to John. John couldn't write what the seven thunders said, but they said some things to John. John saw so many things. But he saw this great crowd of people. And John was just amazed by this crowd of people. 
And one of those elders answered and said to John, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? They've washed their robes. Who are all these people? Well, John was asked by the elders, Who are these people and whence came they? Where did they come from? Now, here's what John wrote in the Revelation 7, verse number 14. I said unto him, the elder, Sir, thou knowest, <laughs> I don't know, you know. And he, the elder, said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, hard times. And here's what they did. They have washed their robes, and they made them white. They did what God commanded them to do. They washed their robes. They made them white. Oh, that's great. And now they're in Christ. Why? Because, here's what he said, He made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Folks, that's baptism. When we are washed in the blood of the Lamb. The blood was shed in Jesus' death on the cross. And he was buried, and he raised. When we die to sin, we're buried with him into his death. That's where the blood is. The blood is in the water. And when we are buried with him into his death, we wash our sins away. And our robes are washed white in the blood of the Lamb. If we have done that, we are going to go to heaven. And we're going to go through those gates. The question is, have we done that? Are you blissed out today? Oh, I got so many problems, David. I got, you just don't know all the problems I have. No, I don't. If I did, I'd probably just shake in my boots. And if I told you some of my problems, you would shake in your boots. I'm telling you, we do have problems. But we can be blissed out if we read the Word of God and hold on to it. If we are aware that we can die tomorrow, but we'll die in the Lord. If we're aware that Jesus can come back at any moment, but we are ready to meet Him because our garments are washed in the blood of the Lamb. If we're aware that we are Christians at the marriage, we're the bride of Christ. That's such a happy thought. And we know that we've been baptized into Christ and took part in that first resurrection, so we're not going to take part in the second death. Not going to happen. And we keep and hold on to everything that God says, the prophecies of His book, as best as we can, and we do His commandments. We're washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you ready? Why don't you come? Why together we stand and sing? Thank you.